Human Body Theater starring Bones. Act one, the skeletal system. Thank you, thank you. Clap, 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 clap. As you know, I am a human skeleton. Now, if this were real life and not some silly play, I would look a lot more like this. But you, would you really want to keep reading if I looked like this for the rest of the show? I didn't think so. Through the magic of pen and paper, I can be a standing, talking, dancing, boo, skeleton. Okay, fine, no dancing, for now. But I am going to tell you why bones are so <laughs> bony. No, important. Bones are the underlying structure for the whole human body. When you look at the complex things that we humans build, you see an, how important an internal framework can be. Without their underlying su structures to support them, these objects would look a lot like me when I was a pile of bones. Totally useless. Here's the underlying structure of a house. Here's the underlying structure of a car. Our own bones work in a similar way. Take a look. There are 206 bones in the adult human body. Cranium, orbit, mandible or jaw, scapula or shoulder bone, clavicle, humerus, radius, ulna, ribs, spine, pelvis, sacrum, coccyx, those are the last bones of your spine, also called your tailbone. In an animal, they would continue to make an actual tail. Femur, patella, tibia, fibia, metatarsals, and phalanges. I'm the femur, and I'm the largest bone in the human body. Some bones, like our leg and arm bones, offer stability. Other bones, like the skull and rib cage, protect our soft, squishy insides. And I'm the stapes, the smallest bone in the human body. You can find me in the ear. Looking inside, the hand and the foot. So your leg is made of the tibia or shin and fibula, the bone behind it. Here's your hand made with phalanges, metacarpals, carpals. Here's the radius and ulna, the two bones of your arm. Here's where your wrist is found. Here's your foot. The heel is a bone called the calcaneus. Here are tarsals and metatarsals instead of carpals and metacarpals. And again, phalanges. Gulp! Yeehaw! Aha! I'm riding barefoot. Looking inside, the skull. The skull houses the brain and keeps it safe, kind of like a built-in helmet. Sock it to me, says the skeleton. The skull is made of the frontal bone, parietal bone, orbit or eye socket, zygomatic bone, temporal bone, and mandible. Here they are again from the side and the back. Looking inside, the spine. Each of the individual bones that make up the spine is called a vertebra, but a bunch of them together are called vertebrae. This is quite the climb. 24 of the 33 vertebrae of the spine are connected with cushions of cartilage called spinal discs. This allows us to bend and twist. The other nine are fused together. The spine also provides protection for a network of nerves called the spinal cord. Here's the bones from top to bottom. Cervical vertebrae in your neck, there's seven. Thoracic vertebrae behind your chest, there's 12. Spinal discs are cartilage between the bones and the lumbar vertebrae at your lower back, there's five. The sacrum is five fused vertebrae and the coccyx is four fused vertebrae. In an animal, these would become the tail. In humans, they're just above your butt. Lower back, behind your chest and shoulders, neck. Oh, and the spinal cord runs through this part right here so that it's well protected. Looking inside, the rib cage and the pelvis. 
Here's the sternal notch, the sternum, the xifold process, false ribs, true ribs, and the intercostal cartilage. Again, this stuff is cartilage, not bone, but it's very strong, flexible, and important. The rib cage keeps organs like the heart and lungs safe. The pelvis, or hip bones, cradles the organs of the lower abdomen, the small intestine, large intestine, and bladder, to name a few. Here's the iliac crest, the ilium, the pubis, the hip joint, and here's the base of the spine with the sacrum and coccyx. Woo! And it's not just us humans who have bones. We belong to a large group of animals called vertebrates. Being a vertebrate simply means that you have a backbone or spine. Fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals are all vertebrates. Sorry, worms, butterflies, clams, sea stars, and lobsters, you're all invertebrates. So far, we've only seen the outside of bones. Although bones appear to be hard and solid, a closer look will reveal their true nature. Looking inside, bones. I'm a bone cell. So here's if you were to cut a bone open. You could actually do this if you are cooking and you have a beef bone or a marrow bone, for example. You can break it. Uh, oh, chicken bones, drumsticks are good for this. And you'll see the outer wall called the periosteum or bone sheath is made of compact bone and it carries the blood vessels. Here's the spongy bone at the center. Uh, oh, sorry, here's the spongy bone, which is the mid part of the bone, and then the center uh, is kind of hollow. Uh, it's full of marrow instead, which is um, soft and squishy red and makes new red blood cells. We're a pretty solid team but there's always a little wiggle room. Fibers of collagen, a protein found in the skin and joints, give bones some flexibility. While the elements calcium and phosphorus make bones rigid. In the center of the bone, marrow produces red blood cells. That's the part that goes here. You'll see lots of me later, red blood cells. Marrow, along with the compact bone, acts as a mineral reserve. Extra calcium, extra phosphorus, extra calcium. If certain nutrients in your body are gone or low, they can be taken out of storage in the bone and sent where they're needed. The vitamins and minerals that strengthen our bones must get into our bodies first. Here's calcium lifting some ferrium or iron, Fe. Calcium from foods like dairy products, fortified juice, and broccoli, and vitamin D from the sun help to keep bones healthy and strong. These nutrients are especially important when we are growing up. Speaking of growing up, I think it's photo album time. Aw, here's me as a newborn baby. Aren't I the cutest? We're actually born with over 300 bones most of which are soft and flexible cartilage. As we grow, our bones begin to harden with the help of calcium in our diet. Some bones even fuse together. Remember all those separate bones that make up the skull? School picture day, I had just lost my front tooth. Oh, that's me when I was nine. I broke my arm that summer. As you are probably aware, bones can break especially when you are not so good at the monkey bars. It hurt a bunch when I broke my arm, crack. But after a few months, my arm healed. Let's take a look at how bones are able to heal when they break. Yes, please. First, a doctor must figure out if and how a bone is broken. Any type of break in a bone is called a fracture. Doctors use x-rays to see pictures of your bones through the skin. Here's my x-ray. I had a simple fracture, 
That means the bone was broken in one place. A comminuted fracture is a bone that is broken in two or more places or crushed. A complete fracture is when a bone is broken into two pieces. An open fracture is when the bone is sticking through the skin. Scary. A green stick fracture is a bone that does not break all the way through. Once the type of fracture is identified, the doctor will then set the bone by moving it into the right position for it to heal. If the fracture is in a larger bone, like the femur, or it's comminuted, broken in two or more places or crushed, metal plates or pins can be used to keep the bone from moving around. Since setting the bone might be painful, the doctor usually does this while the patient is under anesthetics, which means these are, you get a shot and you can't feel an area, it goes numb, it stops being able to hurt, but also it will usually put you to sleep as well. You can have uh, an anesthetic just for an area, like if you go to the dentist and they make part of your mouth numb, that's an anesthetic. You can get general anesthesia, which is when you go to sleep um, for a surgery or for something bigger. How am I going to keep that in place? Once the bone is set, it usually needs a cast. Casts can be made of bandages soaked in plaster or from plastic or fiberglass. A cast will stay on for about one to two months. Its job is to keep the bone in place so it can properly heal. During this time, new bone cells and blood vessels are made, slowly rebuilding the bone. Thanks a bunch. When the bone is healed, the cast is sawed off with a saw. Don't worry, it's a special saw used for cutting through casts. Once the cast is removed, the injured area might be smaller because those muscles weren't getting any exercise under there. The skin may also be dry and flaky. As you get back strength in that area, it will start to look the way it did before the break. I might even have you do special exercises to help the injured area get strong again. This is called physical therapy. Broken bones can happen to anyone, big or small, young or old. Here are some things you can do to help keep your bones healthy, happy, healthy, and safe. Remember those bone healthy foods? Eat us. Regular exercise will keep bones strong. Protective gear like helmets and knee pads will help keep your bones safe too. I got this. There are more pieces to the skeletal puzzle. How are all of our bones connected? Joints. A joint is the place where two bones meet. All 206 bones in the human body are linked together by joints. Fixed joints are set in place and do not move. See those squiggly lines on the skull? Those are fixed joints called sutures. So when a baby is born, these are separate bones and then they grow together and become a fixed joint called a suture. They can't move around relative to each other anymore. So it acts more like one bone once you're grown up. Doing the twist. Cartilaginous joints are slightly movable. When I twist my spine, these discs of cartilage help it rotate. Movable joints do just that. They move. Sometimes these joints are called synovial joints because movable joints are filled with synovial fluid. The synovial fluid says, I help reduce friction when joints move. These joints can be found all over the body and there are a few different types. Hinge joints, like the elbow. Ball and socket joints, like at your hips. Gliding joints, like at your wrist. To top it all off, tough pieces of elastic tissue called ligaments, connect bone to bone, strengthening each joint. Sometimes our bones make a cracking or popping sound when they are bent. Here's how. The synovial fluid 
Inside the joints contains nutrients for cells to keep the cartilage healthy. The fluid also contains gases like carbon dioxide and oxygen. People think that when a joint is bent, more gas gets into the fluid, making gas bubbles. These bubbles pop, and that's the sound you hear. Scientists are still researching why our joints make a crack sound. When they do, what they do know is that cracking your joints does not cause arthritis or serious damage. You just shouldn't do it all the time. Okay, so we've got bone cells, bones, joints, and ligaments. Well, that about wraps it up for the skeletal system. It's time for me to change into my costume for, oh yeah, muscles.